Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome to part four and a half of the series, The Messiah in the Old Testament, where we are proving that the Messiah did exist and the Most High did have a chosen one from above that he hid, but he put it in plain sight right there in the scriptures. But he also had a chosen one from below, which was of the flesh, but the other one was of the spirit. So, starting from Adam, who fell, the righteous seed went all the way through to Jacob and his twelve sons. And beyond that, also the grafted in that chose to dwell amongst us and, and follow the ways of the Most High is also the righteous as well and is included into the house of Yasharal as we've seen written throughout all the scriptures. So you have all these foreshadow of Hamashiach going on. I have all these laws written about him. For him, it's prophesied about him, what he would come, what he would do, and who loins he would come out of when he did come. You have all this evidence piled up to prove for those who believe in the Father's truth, in all the book, in all of the scriptures, as a whole, those it's, it's for those who believe all of it, not bits and pieces you pick and choose, or bits and pieces you decide to twist for your agendas. And we have many men and women out there doing that. Twisting the truth for their agenda. And the closer you get to the Most High, the more holier and righteous and pure you see that He is. And you see that He never changes. You'll see a pattern that He has with His saints, with His chosen, with His prophets. There's a pattern that never changes that we must conform to. The closer you get to him, the closer you get to that pattern, the more and the more you understand him and the less you'll be deceived. Brothers and sisters. This is Psalms chapter one. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the unrighteous. Y'all know I don't say this word and what the reason why I don't. Even if you don't believe this word pertains to another deity, I do. And therefore, I have cut this word out of my vocabulary. And even the JC name is out of my vocabulary and the LRD name as well. Y'all know this by now. Some of you may not believe it, but all you have to do is the same research I've done. And you'll see that this name is attached to that fallen one. Who is the deity of war? Uh, I, I have a video about that. But anyway, so I replace this word with unholy or unrighteous. Y'all see it? So you will see me say stuff like, instead of this word, I'll say Yahweh. Or I might say Master. Or I might say Yahusha. But pretending, I mean, it depends on what that word is pertaining to at the moment. You might see LRD where where uh, where a saint is talking to an angel, and he might be saying "Master" to the angel. Let's talk with him, or he might be saying "Yahweh." At that time, speaking through the angel to the Most High. You understand? All this is happening, brothers and sisters, at the same time. It's like, um, even though Hamashiach is from above, he came through the lineage of King David to be born in the flesh and walk amongst us in the flesh. So in the spirit, he's from above. And, but in the flesh, he's here below with us, showing us the righteous and holy ways. 
And he's the only one that truly walked it out right, perfectly, before the eyes of the Most High. And the Most High was well pleased in his son. But when you walk, when you when your counsel is of the unrighteous, you stand in confusion. You're always being confused. They're always bringing up this, that, and the other, bringing in pineal glands and frequencies into the ministry, confusing you more, talking about things the Most High never talked about. They bringing in heathen doctrines, and I learned a lesson from that with Judah for life. And hopefully y'all did as well. The Most High never taught like that. Yeah, I woke up to that as well. Hopefully y'all did too. There are different teaching styles out here that's not of the Most High. And they're twisting all this heathen stuff into it. And they're tainting the Word while doing it. Some of them are Selling in a ministries of, that ain't of the most high. Some of them are collecting tithes, 10% tithes of your money. When t tithes was of food. Now I understand today's economy is based on money and you may have no property to grow food and stuff like that. But you could send food to your whoever if that's what you want to do. And you can give an offering. Nothing wrong with an offering. Nothing wrong with giving good alms to someone. But let's put it all under a proper context and proper perspective of the scriptures first. Before we do what other people say do. So there's a lot of wicked counsel. Some of y'all are, are being led by wicked children of fornication that was born of fornication and adultery standing up preaching and teaching you the word they'll never they'll never bring you into the full truth the most high has not chosen them he never has chosen any wicked child born of fornication to preach his word he's holy he's pure and he's true he, he'll never change if that was true then he would he would have to choose satan to be amongst us preaching the gospel. Y'all hear what I'm saying? If that was true, he had to, he had to choose a sinner that refused to change their ways to preach his gospel. And if that was true, then he would have let King David's firstborn child of uh, a form of uh, adultery live and become king and preach to you so the closer you get to the father the more you understand his holiness and his righteousness and that he will not think like us he will not budge like us he will not lean to the left or the right for us or with us the more the more fear you are you you put upon yourself and you understand Wait a minute, what's not gonna budge for me alone? This because they say I, I, it's good. Y'all know how the uh, Christian church does. Nobody's perfect, and they lean on that understanding to continue in their ways and their sins. There was only one perfect person, and that was how much that was. You know, they'll say J.C. There was only one person perfect, and that was J.C. We'll never be perfect. Are you trying to say we're going to be perfect? You know, they'll throw all this stuff at you. Even when you're not saying that. Even when you say what the hum, what, what the what Hamashiach said, go and sin no more. They will twist that and twist your words. So that they can continue to sin. Y'all need to be mindful of these things when you're dealing with these pastors and preachers. You need to come away from all of them. All the pastors and preachers of the churches you left. Christianity, Islam, 
Judaism. Anyone that's picking up our book in some religion and trying to preach it back to you, you need to get away from that period. Totally. And then you need to uh, cut off all the wicked Hebrews that was born of fornication standing up here and trying to teach you something. It's not going to happen. Most high ain't going to let it happen. That's just not how he operates, brothers and sisters. And if he did, he would be a liar. And then he would have to allow all this wickedness to take place forever. And the kingdom would never get cleaned up. So he won't change for your thoughts and your, your ideas. You have to learn his ways all the way. And come as close as you can and let Hamashiach be a propitiation and a help and a comfort to you. Let the Holy Spirit do what it's supposed to be doing in your life. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scorners. Maybe I should start over. <laughs> Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the unrighteous, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Don't try to sit in some other man's seat who is bringing scorn upon us. You know, there are some people wanting to go into IUIC and try to get to the top and, and sit in that seat. No. No, that's a dead thing. And it's going to die along with everybody who stays a part of it. Instead, you come out of that and let the Most High's Chosen One sit in His seat. And you serve the will of the Father and the One He has sent to be your King and High Priest. But His delight is in the law of Yahweh, and in, in His law doth He meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in the season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall not, I mean, shall prosper. The unrighteous are not so, but are like the chafe which the wind driveth away. Therefore the unrighteous shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For Yahweh knoweth the way of, right, of the righteous, but the way of the unrighteous shall perish. Now, let's get into some scriptures that prove Hamashiach. Now that we got that portion out of the way, brothers and sisters, because that was very important to understand. Psalms, Psalms 2. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Now right here he's talking about his anointed people. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Yahweh shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Who is this they're talking about? I would declare the decree. Yahweh has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for, my, for thy possessions. This is talking about Hamashiach in the spiritual, which he's restoring us in the spiritual for a spiritual kingdom to come. And it's also talking about us below, his sons below, his daughters below, whom he has given the kingdom. We are one with Hamashiach. He came through the lineage of King David to restore what the Father has given us. But he was before us and after us, brothers and sisters. 
But the Most High shall always be the Most High, and he will always be our creator. Though he appoints kings and priests, and high priests, and understand that. So you got the book talking about Yahusha, and it's talking about Yahshua, and people are not understanding how all this fits together. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Remember the Moses said he would use us as his, as his hammer. Um, his, his, um, his wrath. But he also said the same to his son. Are we not brothers with Hamashiach? Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. He said that to both of us, didn't he? Be wise now, therefore, ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Didn't he make us the judges over the earth? We shall judge. Some of us will judge the twelve tribes of Yashara in our newly uh, caught up form when we meet Hamashiach when he returned in the air. He's going to change us. And then we're going to come down and judge the twelve tribes. We will judge angels as well. As y'all remember me mentioning that there will be two groups coming when Amashek returned. There's the ones, the mighty ones that's going to be changed to be like the supermen that's going to wreck shop with Hamashiach. These are the ones being prepared right now. They're being drawn through the fire now and being cleaned up and being shown many things and they're being prepared for this great battle and war. And when they get caught up, they're going to be changed to be the mighty men of, of, of the earth. And destroy all these wicked heathens with Hamashiach. And then you're going to have those still in the flesh to come in for, to fulfill the rest of the prophecies. And real be of Zion. They're going to live to 120. And they're going to, they're going to live a good old age. And they're going to have the law of such commandments put in their minds and hearts to do them. There's two groups that Hamashiach is coming back for. But it is really one group. One in the spirit, one in the flesh. Y'all see it? And I'm trying to give y'all this deep meat here of the spiritual from above and the flesh from below that the Most High has chosen. And the same things he's saying for the Son, he's saying for us too. Because we are still one with him. Even his son, we're still one with him. He's our brother. Serve Yahweh with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you sh and you perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put his trust in him. So at the same time, he's talking about the son and from above, who's going to be the high king. He's going to be the king over all the kings of Zion. And he's going to be the high priest. As um, the word says. Just as this word says. He will be a priest after the order of Melchizedek. And we're going to get to that as well. But just wanted to cover that real quick. So at the same time, we are his son from down here that he's chosen Yashara, the 12 tribes. And we bear his name. And we bear his wrath. We bear his, his arm of salvation as well. We bear what the Most High bears, gives us, and what the Son bears as well and gives us. So... The same with the son who is the head of us, the head of Yashara, and all the things that he is doing with us, we are going to do with the rest of the world as appointed. Y'all see this? But the Most High has chosen a head from up above to lead perfectly over Zion. And I hope y'all are tying this all in. And 
getting the spiritual meat and understanding. Let's go to Psalms chapter 8. And this is where we're going to begin to skip around a single verses, a few verses, and not read the whole chapter. Psalms chapter 8, 2 through 6. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon, the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visited him. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. So, as Adam was given this dominion, he had dominion over all things until he sinned and another came to join him in his dominion and y'all know who that was and he's been wrecking havoc ever since him and his uh, his wicked horde has been wrecking shop so not only did he have a crown and dominion he had the the word as well. So Adam was also a king. And because he was charged with the ways of the Most High, he was a priest as well. Just as Melchizedek was king and priest, the Most High has always had a king and priest, king and high priest as well. But this final one would come to be an everlasting king and priest over Yasharal, appointed by the Most High, though the Most High is our high king and creator. Overall, he can make other people king, kings and other people priests. If that is his design and his choosing, let's go to Psalms 10 and 16. 10 and 16. It says, Yahweh is king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his out of his land. He is king forever. You can't take no one could take his kingship from him. He's he will always be that. He will always be our great king. Though he makes kings in Y'all can read about that in Revelation chapter nine, chapter seven, chapter five, verse nine and ten, where he's making kings and priests of us. Where's the dispute in that? But one came along to become a stumbling block to the, to the wicked and the foolish of our people, and his name is Yahusha. And they can't, they can't get it. Because their hearts are wicked, y'all. And they always lash out at you in wickedness. Do y'all notice that about the ones who don't believe in the Messiah? They're quick to um, lash out at you, go off on you, or curse you, or put you down, or uh, just be rude and mean and you see the works of their hands and their mouths and their flesh right before your face on the screens and in the comment sections. The things they turbo type. You see their fruits of their spirit. You'll know them by the fruits of their spirit, brothers and sisters. And not to say I wasn't like that before, but I learned my lessons and I stopped. I understood as I gained and I grew in the spirit. I don't argue in the comment sections like that. I don't go off on people no more. You let them do, let the wicked be wicked still, as the scriptures say. Let's go to Psalms 14 and 7. Oh, that the salvation of Yah, of Yahshua were come out of Zion. Whoa, look at that. 
Oh, that the salvation of Yahshua will come out of Zion. So even King David was waiting on the salvation to come out of Zion. Who is he waiting on then, if he's the one? Who is he waiting on? Oh, they don't want to hear this though. Oh, oh, it's talking about us. No, it ain't. It ain't talking about King David. It's not talking about the single person, Jacob, either, who was given his name, his name changed to Yahshua. It's, it was always one coming out of the household of King David. When Yahweh bringeth back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice and Yahshua shall be glad when his salvation comes. This is when we're going to be glad. This is who we're waiting on. So who are they waiting on right now? King David to return? To be risen? And then come back down here? Who's going to raise him? Whose blood is covering King David? He was, he sinned. He committed adultery. He wasn't perfect. Who are they waiting on? Who's going to save them? Because the Most High has designated Yahusha as our salvation, our perfect sacrifice. Let's go to Psalm 16, 7 through 11. I will bless Yahweh, who have given me counsel. My reigns also instruct me in their night seasons. I have set Yahweh always before me, because he is at my right hand. Whoa, 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 whoa. I shall not be moved. What? I have said. Yahweh always before me. Because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoice. My flesh also shall rest in hope. We know that there was one who came up and sat at the right hand side of the Heavenly Father. For thou wilt not leave my soul in the grave. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Well, we saw corruption, didn't we? A lot of our people did too when they died and their body they began to rot in the grave. But there was one who went into the grave. That's what this means, grave. There was one that went into the grave and his body did not rot. It did not decay. Brothers and sisters. Thou would show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Who's at his right hand? If you believe that. Let's go down to Psalms 18 and 50. 18 and verse 50. Great deliverance giveth he to his king, and show mercy to his anointed, to David, and to his seed forevermore. Wait a minute. This is talking about the house of David now. And to his seed forevermore. Now, right here, we're not talking about Yahshua. Though Yahshua will be saved through the seed of David. But this is specifically talking about to David and to his seed forevermore. His seed. Let's go back. Right here where the Most High said that the kingdom of Yahshua would go to King David and to his sons. By a covenant of salt. And it would never change. So King David would always have the kingship. Just as the Levites would always have the priesthood. As we read in um, Exodus. And one of those parts. I think part one we read that. Or part two and or two and a half. One of them. But if you haven't seen those. Go watch them. So, to King David, 
and his seed forever. There is deliverance. There is mercy. In that seed. Now let's go to Psalms chapter 22. Let's, let's read 1 through 19 on this one. I'm not going to read it all. 1 through 19. My Elohim, my Elohim, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring. O oh, my Elohim, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And in the night season, and I am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Yasharal. Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee, and were delivered. They trusted in thee, and were not confounded. But I am a worm, and no man, a reproach of men, and despise of the people. And, um, uh, all they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip, they shake the head, saying he trusted on Yahweh that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. Be thou, be thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my Elohim, my my, my Ahalim from my mother's belly, be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls of Bashan have beset me around. They gapped upon me with their mouths as a raving and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a pot shard, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death, for dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. Who is this? I may tell all my bones they they look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. But be not thou far from me, O Yahweh, O my strength. Haste thee to help me. Who is this? Brothers and sisters, this talking about right here. I'm not going into Matthews, but y'all know who this is. Psalms 24. Let's go to Psalms 24. Let's read verse 7 through 10. 7 through 10. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the key? Who is the door? Hamashiach. He is the key, and he is the door. And what he openeth, no man can close. And what he closeth, no man can open. Because the Father have given him the key. And just as he gave Peter the key, before he left. But he can give those keys to all of us who are in him through the spirit of holiness and truth, brothers and sisters. Who is this king of glory? Well, just, now let me go back a little bit. Just as you've seen in the past where the Father gave men that key to open and close and shut up and things were written up above spoken out of the mouths of his holy and righteous and his prophet 
his holy ones. And they were done in heaven. Who is this king of glory? Yahweh strong and mighty. Yahweh mighty in battle. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands, O ye gates. Even lift them up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? Yahweh host. He is the king of glory. Salah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Most High is always king. Even when his son who is king comes, he will always be king. Even when we stand up as kings, he will always be king. And through him we share in the kingship. We're one. We're all in all. Y'all remember that verse? You have to keep that in mind. We're all in all. That's why we become kings and priests. We come we are as the Most High, living in the image of the Most High. Not just this image, but in the image. The, the Word made flesh. You become the Word made flesh. You become that King and Priest as well. We don't ever replace Him. We become as Him. Because that's what He's making of us. Salah. Pause. Think about that. This matches what's in Daniel chapter 7, 13 through 14, which is right here. Let's go back. Now, everything that matches this son of man. No, let me go back. Everything that matches the father. Not everything. Because it's a whole lot of things we don't know about the Father and understand. But the things that we do know and understand about Him, those things that match Him, match the Son. And those things that match the Son match Yahshua and His children. And those that become like Him match all the ancient forefathers before, before Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those same ways, the same we all are all in all. We all become one. And we match with the holy angels. Except for sin. That's upon us right now. Once that is done away with. We will be as the angels. There's your understanding right there. With that one. More deep spiritual meaning. The father was making him. So when you see this. You're going to read it about the son. And you're going to read it about us as well. Because we are being made into like many me's, many him's. Because that's his pleasure. That's what he wants. And we have to bow to his will, not our own. Psalms 31 and 5. Let's go to Psalms 31 and 5. Bear with me, brothers and sisters. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me. O oh, Yahweh, Elohim of truth. Wow. Into thine hand. Y'all see it? Let's go on then. Some of these things y'all gonna have to pick up on your own. Some of these things I'm not gonna explain. Just go to see if you see it. If you see it, you see it. If not, come back to it later on, and you will see later on. Psalms 34 and 20. He keepeth all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Didn't we read? We read something like this just a while ago. That matches... Hmm. Who is this? Who is this? Who is this, y'all, that King David is talking about? It's just so much evidence. It can't be denied. Let's go to Psalms 35, 11 and 12. False witness did rise up, 
They laid to my charge things that I knew not. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. Now, of course, we all got false witnesses rising up, false charges. But who is this talking about right here? That laid false witnesses up, that risen up against him and laid charges to him that he knew not. And rewarded him evil for good. All the good he has done to the spoiling of his soul. Let's drop down to verse 19. It says, let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. That hate him without a single cause. For he was perfect. Let's go to um, 41 and 9. 41 and 9. Psalms 41 and 9. Yeah, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, have lifted up his heel against me. Who was this one that betrayed him? Who was one of those twelve that betrayed him? Let's go to Psalms 45. 45, 6 through 7. Thy throne, O Yah, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Let me make sure I got that right. 45, 67. Yeah. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, Yah, thy Elohim, have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Who was this that's above thy fellows? I read a verse in that come from Esdras. Oh, wait a minute. Was it Esdras? Could have been another book that said that this one that was chosen to come out of the loins of David, the son of Yah, was above his fellows. Hallelujah. Here's the match to that. The witness to that. Now let's go to 49. Psalms 49, 14 through 15. 49, 14 through 15. Like sheep they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them. And the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning and their beauty shall consume in the grave from their dwelling but Yah will redeem my soul from the power of the grave for he shall receive me Salah so how are you gonna be received from the grave when your body decayed when you don't even believe in the one whose body didn't decay whom the father rose up in holiness and righteousness to cover you, to redeem you. How? How are you going to do it without this one that was chosen to come through the lineage of King David? Through the lineage of Judah? How are you going to be covered? Saying, Hamashiach was a Levite. For some of you who fell for that one, which is a new doctrine, stop falling for all these doctrines, y'all. Let's go to Psalm 68 and 18. 68 and 18. But 68 and 18. It says, Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for, for men. Yeah, for the rebellious also. That Yahweh Elohim might dwell among them. Y'all remember the Most High set him to put all wickedness underneath his feet. 
That's his job. He's of the Most High, from the Most High to do this. The Most High made him. He, he specifically sent him to do this. That's his part. Though it's all the Most High doing it, it's all Him. But He worketh through Him, just like He worketh through me and everybody else. It's it's all the glory. Everything comes from Him. He's upon. He's He's moving the righteous feet, but He's turning the wicked over to the wicked ones. Who is this who is sinning on high and led captivity captive? Who broke us free from our, our prison houses our, of uh, death? Our prison houses of sin? Who come to set us free? The Most High. It is him who has set us free. He is our salvation. And he has used the person he said he was going to use to get that done. But he had a lot of foreshadow of things of other people that he used to be his salvation through them before he came with the final one. Let's go to Psalms. No. Yeah, Psalms 69 and 4. 69 and 4. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. They that would destroy me, being mine enemies, wrongfully are mighty. Then I restored that which I took not away. And let's drop down to 7 and through 9. Because for thy sake I have borne reproach. Shame hath covered my face. I am become a stranger unto my brethren. And an alien unto my mother's children. I know we all can bear witness. The same things that happen to him will happen to us. You becoming a reproach. Shame hath covered our faces. Strangers, uh, your brother and sister become strangers unto you. You're alien in your own household with your, with your mother's children or amongst them or at the family reunion. You're an alien. You don't fit in. Same with Hamashiach. For the zeal of thine house have eaten me up. And the reproaches of them that reproached thee are fallen upon me. Y'all hear that? The servant is not greater than the master. The things that's happened, as has happened to Hamashiach has happened to us. Even those before him who were killed for the zeal of the father. Had the same things happen to them. Drop down to 20 and 21. Reproach have broken my heart and I am full of heaviness. And I looked for some to take pity. But there was none. And for comfort, comforters. But I found none. They gave me also gall for my meat. And in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. And you. We all know what this is, and that this was fulfilled by the Holy One of Yasharal and his son when he was on that tree. Let's go to Psalm 72. Psalm 72, and we're going to read all of that. Give the kingdom thy judgments, O Yah, and thy righteousness unto the kings 
son. He shall judge thy people with righteousness and thy poor with judgment. The mountain shall bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. We haven't seen this yet. Not in the, even in the days of King David. He faced a whole lot in during his time. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy and shall break in pieces the oppressor. Yeah, King David did break in pieces the oppressors all around. Once he took the kingdom, the Most High blessed him to bring peace all the way around. Brothers and sisters, they shall fear thee as long as the sun, and so did others of his uh, his other sons who did obey the commandments the most high broken pieces the other ones around him and brought peace for a little time with the other sons as well but when the final son comes which he came but he's coming back again to set up the kingdom of the most high he's going to bring a final everlasting peace into this world they shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations he shall come down like rain upon the mown grass as showers that water the earth in his day shall the righteous flourish he's talking about the righteous of zion the righteous children that's going to be brought back when he returned in his days we shall flourish in a an abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth, you will never see the heathens achieve their so-called peace and safety because sudden destruction was decreed to come upon them soon as they say that and try to do that. And it has happened every time they decreed, oh, peace and safety, oh my. Next you know they're running the streets, hell falling upon them, earth, earth opening up, wars breaking out. People getting shot and killed and thrown in prison and all, all hell breaks loose when they say peace and safety. And we've seen that time and time again in their kingdoms that they done searched out all over the earth to try to accomplish. We've seen this take place when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction come upon them. What y'all thought that was just in these last days? It happened before and each and every time. In each and every place they went to, there was never any peace and safety. There was always sudden destruction that come upon the inhabitants and the ones who brought that destruction to the inhabitants of the lands. They, they experienced their own destruction trying to create their own utopian peace and safety. And we see that throughout history. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea. This king will have dominion from sea to sea. He will, he will have kingship over all of the kingdoms. But his seat will be in Zion. And from the river unto the ends of the earth. They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him. Remember in chapter Daniel chapter 7 again, 13 to 14. The Most High gave him this dominion. That all nations in, in uh let me go over there. The Most High gave him this dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. And his dominion shall be everlasting. So it's the Most High that gave him this kingdom, this dominion from sea to sea and from river to, to uh, from the river unto the ends of the earth. They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him and his enemies shall lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. Yeah, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. Now remember, it's also talking about us who are kings as well, along with Hamashiach. Remember, he's making a nation of kings and priests. And our first job was to be kings and priests to the earth over all the nations 
Hamashiach restored that. He's our brother. He restored. He came restored us to our rightful place. Kings and priests, brothers and sisters. So, with that deeper understanding, what Hamashiach is and what he's done and is doing, we do as well and become as well. And that's why you see things written about Yasharal shall take the kingdom. Uh, the kingdom shall belong to his saints. Even though one has been appointed over us, brothers and sisters. For he shall deliver the needy when he crieth. The poor also in him that hath no helper. He shall spare the poor and needy and shall save the souls of the needy. He shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence, and precious shall their blood be in his sight. And he shall live, and to him shall be given of the gold of Sheba. Prayer also shall be made for him continually, and daily shall he be praised. Hold up. Oh, the Most High told me not to worship no man but him, and the Most High did tell you. You just ain't listening. But don't make no idol like, a, you know, like a image and just place it up in your house and fall down to it. There shall be a handful of corn in the earth upon the top of the mountains. The fruit thereof shall shake like Lebanon and they of the city shall flourish like grass of the earth. His name shall endure forever. His name shall be counted, continued as long as the sun. And men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. It's also talking about Yasharal. Yasharal is his anointed too. And his blessed. Those who bless him will be blessed. Those who curse him will be cursed. Blessed be Yahweh, Elohim, the Elohim of Yasharal, who only doth wondrous things. And blessed be his glorious name forever, and let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen, amen. Some say, amen, amen. The prayers of David. The son of Jesse are ended. This is his prayers. And him bearing witness and prophesying as well. About the king of kings. About the father, son. Which the father has put in the son to say to us. And which was put in us. We say to our own people. And we say to the Gentiles. Let's go to Psalms 75, 2 through 3. 75, 2 through 3. It says, When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. Wow. The Most High is mighty, y'all. And we all serve His will. We all serve His will. This one to come, who the Father has given Him, I mean, uh, whom the Father has chosen, and who the Father has given Him, us, the Father put us in His hands. He bear the name of the Father and He would hold the foundation of our faith and He would uphold the law such commandments of the Father and He would not be moved, He would not be shaken and He would bear us up. Brothers and sisters, 
Let's drop down to 10. All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Now we know Hamashiach was a great horn to come to cut off the horns of the wicked, that the horns of the righteous shall be exalted, that his horns, who is us, the saints, the righteous and the holy, may be exalted. That which is talked about of Hamashiach is also talked about of us, brothers and sisters. Psalms 78, 2-3 78-2-3 says, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us, we will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of Yah, and his strength, and his wonderful works that he hath established. Hallelujah. And this one came with parables, didn't he? Fulfilling that which was spoke spoken of him. Psalms 80 and 17. 80 and 17. Bear with me, brothers and sisters. We just got a few more to go. 80 and 17. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, upon the son of man whom thou madest strong for thyself. Who is this on the right hand? Who is this man on the right hand side of of the father that he's talking about let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand upon the son of man who was called the son of man we also called the son of man but this one was called son of man whom thou madest strong for thyself and now that you have the other missing information you may not have known or may not have understood you understand that the Most High has made it. He made this one before the beginning of heaven and earth. He prepared this one, his son, to do all that he came to do. All that was written of him. The Most High made of him strong for himself. This wasn't your choice. You don't have a choice of saying this. Let's go to Psalms 89, 3 through 4. 89 through 3 through 4. I'm probably passing up some other good scriptures, but y'all have to go over those and add those to your notes later. 89, 3 through 4. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. Thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations Salah so you can't take this one line here where he's raising up David his servant and say you see David shall be our king and only David because you're forgetting about where it says and his sons and the one that would come out of his loins and all the other scriptures that we found here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. Thy seed, and it's talking about David's seed, the house of David now, he, he will establish forever. This is all strengthening us, brothers and sisters. Every time you go over this, you will never be deceived again by these wicked ones. Though they sound good, though their words pour in your ear like honey, though you eat it up like biscuits and gravy, but it will go down and it will come up as vomit. I may have been a little bit more graphic than I was supposed to be, but Y'all work with me. <laughs> All right. 
Let's go to, let's drop down to 18 through 37. For Yahweh is our defense, and the Holy One of Yahshua is our king. Y'all hear this? Remember he's sending his son on his behalf to be a defense to us at the wreck shop. Though the Father be our Holy One, isn't the Holy One the Holy One? Aren't we his Holy One, Yahshua, as well? We're all in all. You got to tie in all these things. It's a bigger picture with deeper meaning, more spiritual meaning that you have to tie all in, brothers and sisters. And the simple ones ain't getting this and they ain't following these wicked ones. Then thou speakest, spakest in vision to thy holy one and says, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. Hasn't he done this with Moses? What about Joshua? Didn't he chose Joshua to bring us in? Both of them were foreshadows of Hamashiach to come. King David? Foreshadow. I could name many more, so can y'all. As the most I use Judith to cut off that general's head and Hamashiach would cut off the heads of the kings, man, and take them down. The most high uses whom he will. He is our salvation, he is our king. But he can't appoint others to use. Just as he had had the angel lead us in the way and put his wrath in the angel. He was a foreshadow of Hamashiach as well. You got to tie that in as well. When the angel, the most high appointed the angel to go before us and told us not to disobey the angel. Y'all better hear me. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. Now because he found David his servant. He blessed him and made a covenant with him in his household. Just as he blessed Abraham and made a covenant with his household. Just as he blessed Jacob and made a covenant with his household and his twelve sons. But he made another covenant with King David and his house. And he made a covenant with Levi in his house to be the priest and this one to be the kings unbroken through time they were foreshadows of the king and priest to come after the order of Melchizedek verse 21 with whom my hand shall be established my arm also shall strengthen him the enemy shall not exact upon him nor the son of wickedness afflict him and I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. This happened with his son Yahshua, just as it happened with his son Yahusha. And when he come back, none of the wicked ones will afflict them or us. And the plagues will hit him again like it hit, it, hit him in Egypt. But on a worldwide scale this time. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. Remember his name. He come in his name. Um, he's going to be called Yahweh our righteousness. What else is said about him? Um, he shall be called wonderful. And counselor. And. These are all the things the Most High is to us. He put all that in His Son. He put all that in Yahshua and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the faithful prophets and servants. We are all in all. He shall cry unto me, Thou art... Wait a minute. I will set His hand also in the sea, and His right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, 
my line of end, the rock of my salvation. Also, I will make him my firstborn higher than the kings of the earth. So he has a firstborn from on high that will reborn us in his spirit and cover all the things Adam did and all of our sins. But he also has his firstborn that he called here on earth in the flesh to show forth his salvation and his praise and his word and his covenants and promises to the world, which was our duty. But we failed and one came from above to, to, to bring us back to our rightful place. But he came to bring us back perfectly because that's the most high. That's how he operates in perfection. Not that we are perfect now, but we will be perfected at his coming. Some of us going to be changed. Some of us coming in the flesh and be and have the law of such commandments put in their minds of us to do them. And you will live and fulfill the rest of those prophecies uh, of Yasharal in the flesh. That has to be fulfilled. My mercy will I keep for him forever. And my covenant shall stand fast with him. This new covenant, y'all, which has been perfected by Hamashiach. And there were changes made to the old one concerning animal sacrifice for sin. But you don't throw out the thank you sacrifices that they did when they won the battles or when they just wanted to praise and worship him and just give him thanks. You don't throw those out. How much she had covered sin and death. He didn't take away your praise sacrifice. Your thank, oh, thank you, Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. He, he never took that away. Now we do it more in the spiritual sense than on the, you know, uh, cutting an animal and throwing him on a pit. But he, as he stated in prophecy, he's going to crank up those sacrifices again. But not for sin. Okay. My mercy will I keep for him forever. And my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure forever. And his throne as the days of heaven. Let's see, how far was I going with this one? 37. If his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments, if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, then will I visit their transgressions with the rod and their iniquities with stripes. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon, and as a faithful witness in heaven. Selah. David and his seed Hona Mashiach came out of Hallelujah Let's go to Psalms 110 which I already have We will to go over it again I already went over it but let's go over it Psalms 110 Where King David himself is talking about someone and the wicked just can't see. They just don't see this. Yahweh said unto my master, Well, who is King David's master that he's talking about? Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So the Most High said, Call this one up. 
and set him on his right hand side after he was accepted as a final wave offering, sin offering before his stone above, set him on his right hand side till he make all his enemies his footstool. And it's coming when the Most High sent him back to put an end of everything to establish his kingdom to come to prepare for his arrival Yahweh shall send the rod of thy salvation I mean the rod of thy strength out of Zion rule thou in the midst of thine enemies thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning thou hast the dew of thy youth Yahweh have sworn and will not repent thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek ruler and priest y'all King David was not that Yahweh at that right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath this is Yahweh Yahweh's right hand coming down from heaven the word made flesh brothers and sisters this is his hand his wrath coming he came as a lamb now he's coming as a lion he shall judge among the heathen he shall fill the places with dead bodies he shall wound the heads over many countries he shall drink of the brook in the way. Thereof shall he lift up the head. Praise ye Yahweh. Oops. That was as far as I was supposed to go. <laughs> but as you can see, this will be fulfilled that King David was talking about. And whom King David was calling master. And whom King David was waiting on. This one to be his salvation and propitiation for his own sins as well as all the other saints who was waiting on this one to come that the Father has appointed to be our salvation. Psalms 118, 21 through 29, 118, 21 through 29. I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. This is Yahweh's doing. It is, it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which Yahweh hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I beseech thee, O Yahweh, O Yahweh. I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of Yahweh. We have blessed you out of the house of Yahweh. Yah is, Elohim is Yahweh, which have showed us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. Hallelujah. Thou art my Elohim, I will praise thee. Thou art my Elohim, I will exalt thee. O oh, give thanks unto Yahweh, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Psalms 132. 8 through 11, then 17 through 18, and we will be done. Arise, O Yahweh, enter thy rest, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness, and let thy saints shout for joy. For thy servant David's sake, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Yahweh have sworn in truth unto David. Y'all remember, you can't do the one-line thing when it says this. You have to include the sons of David. Just as anywhere else it says Jacob or Yasharal alone, you have to include the sons of Jacob. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. Huh? Yahweh have sworn in truth unto David. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I sit upon thy throne. What? Of the fruit of King David's body? One is going to sit upon his throne? Didn't we read that? You got witness after witness after witness, but their eyes are blinded and they can't see this. 
brothers and sisters. There will I make the horn of David to bud. I have ordained a lamp for mine anointed. This is the lamp, the light to come for his anointed Yasharal. To come through the horn, uh, uh, to be the horn of David. To come through the lineage of David. And our enemies, his enemies will I clothe with shame. But upon himself shall his crown flourish. And you can tie that in right here. What the Most High said. And all the other prophets. And the evidence just goes on and on and on and on, brothers and sisters. Thank y'all for tuning in for this series. Again, I don't know if there's going to be a part five. If there is a part five, there'll be other scriptures that I may tie in later on in the future. But this may just conclude this series, this four part series, which the last part two, three, and four has halves added to it brothers and sisters so y'all please bear with this series and come back to it and save it in your favorites save it in your watch later and come back and learn these scriptures that you'll never be deceived ever again brothers and sisters and look out for my series about Paul and we're going to get into some truth about Paul and, and prove all these heathen brews wrong and all these heathens wrong about him and their disrespect of our brother and their putting down of our brother and the disrespect of the father, his son, Peter, James, and Paul who vouched for him as well and all the other ones that vouch for him that was a month scam brothers and sisters so y'all look out for that one and with that I'm going to say shalom and I'll see y'all in the next video